All right, let's start this. So, okay. You want me to tell you a story? I got to be honest. I'm not good at it. My dad, boy, he could spin a yarn. He could suck you in from the beginning like any good storyteller and keep you stuck to your seat, hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> yep. Dad was probably better at telling stories than anything else. Just ask mom. Me, I'm better with my hands. This story, it's a doozy. I remember dad told it to me one Christmas. He was pretty sauced, and I thought he was making it up as he went along. But in the end, it all made sense. Let me tell you, some weird stuff happens in this story. You might find some of it hard to swallow. First things first, though, you got to tell me something, because this story to make sense, for it to mean anything, you got to believe in something. You have to believe people can change. And I'm talking change in a positive way. You know, change for the better. I'm talking about the idea that someone can go through years of programming and habit and turn on them I'm on their ass. That when the deck is stacked against him, he can get the stones to overcome. It might be difficult for you to understand. You're just a kid. In life, as people get older, they get set in their ways. Most people can never change. It's too scary, like staring off the edge of a cliff. Most people can't take the leap. Some people want to change desperately, but the deck is stacked too high against them. Take Bob, for instance. If he could, old Bob would change almost everything about his life. This Bob, he's a stand-up kind of fella. Trouble is, he's down on his luck since like forever and has a family to take care of, a sick little boy. His job, well, let's just say it, it ain't exactly the stuff of dreams. A dead-end job in a dead-end town and his boss? Ugh, don't get me started on that guy. The definition of cutthroat. A cruel abomination of a man who only cared about money and nothing else. People will whisper his name, almost afraid to say it out loud. Uh, what the hell did he call himself? It's um, down the tip of my tongue. Um, anyway, Bob was desperate. The medical bills were stacking up, and then the economy in the toilet, getting work someplace wasn't exactly an option. Even if it meant doing a job, he didn't really like for a guy he liked even less. I mean, I can't can't believe it. I don't remember this guy's name. It was like um, it was like a sound effect or something. When my dad first told me, I thought he was slurring. Oh, yeah, that's right. The guy's name was Scrooge. What a name, huh? Just like I said, this Scrooge guy didn't care about anyone. He didn't even want to give Bob Christmas off to spend with his kid. The Scrooge giving him the day off was like letting him get away with a crime. All right. Let's talk a second about the Scrooge guy. We all know by now he's a mean old bastard. But what we don't know is how cunning he can be. You don't get in the position Scrooge was in by being a dummy. It wasn't just that people were scared of him. And believe me, they were. It wasn't that people trusted him, always being five steps ahead of the game. Once he saw what he wanted, there wasn't much that could stop him. Bob didn't want to argue with the guy. But he had made a promise to his son that they'd spend Christmas Day together. Scrooge, however, wouldn't budge about the time off. He had other plans. Christmas was just another day. Another day, another dollar. And sure, Bob needed the money, but it wasn't the most important thing in his life. He may have been down on his luck, but ultimately his son was the most important thing to him than anything else. Please don't. I, I got a kid. Don't hurt me. You have one chance. You're going to tell me where he is, and you won't lie if you want to walk out of here. I don't, I don't, he, he never. Tell me. I just gotta know. I never, I mean, I never even met him. I swear, oh Christ, oh God, I was just supposed to drop off the bag and pick up the money. How was he gonna contact you to pick up the money? He was gonna send me another note. Look, please don't. You won't be getting another note. He'll find out you don't have his money and come to collect in spades. Jesus, please. Scum <laughs> like you never cease to amaze me. Do you have any idea what it was in the bag that you delivered? You should be going to jail tonight. Consider yourself lucky that you make a better piece of live bait than jail bait. Now, Bob, being the good guy that he was, consider himself lucky for a guy down on his luck. Long story short, he managed to convince Scrooge to give him the day off. Insurance issues or something. I mean, there was one condition. 
It would have to come to work at the crack of dawn the day after Christmas and be ready to work his ass off. Now, Bob may have had a bit of dumb luck from time to time, but stupid he was not. He knew that the miserable old Scrooge would make him pay for taking a holiday. You see, old Scrooge was vindictive like that. No good deed goes unpunished and all that jazz. Bob was afraid of him. No, no doubt about that. Was a time he would have just quit, but that was before the kid. He had responsibilities now, stuff you can't just run away from. Now, it seemed like everyone and everything constantly reminded Bob of how limited his options were. The thought followed him like a dog tracking his scent, and that dog was big and scary. Now, fear is a funny thing, though. Some guys can get so scared that they let the fear stop them in their tracks. It's like, it's like a thick wall keeping them from where they want to go. Other guys, well, they break through. They let the fear drive them. Scrooge was this kind of fella. Nothing and no one stopped him. He had forgotten what it was like to want. Now, our buddy Bob was the master of one. He would have given almost anything to be the fearless type. He wished he could be a tough guy, someone who took the bull by the horns and all that brass, the man that makes things happen instead of waiting for them to fall in his lap. Big house, fancy cars, you know what I'm talking about. Now, truth be told, Bob was never much of a winner. He lived in a crappy little ramshackle apartment in a crappier neighborhood. This one-bedroom shoebox had a broken toilet and bad heating, but it was a warm place. And that was probably because of little Timmy. Timmy had a bum leg. I'm not quite sure what's wrong with him, but his health wasn't all that great. He was a big ray of sunshine, though. Real good kid. The kind of kid that made you, well, let's just say it sucks he was so bad off. The Cratchit family, see, weren't the type to complain about their position in life. They didn't have much, but what they did have was appreciated. Dad! Love, you know, there was a lot of love there. Oh, she's got... <laughs> she's... <laughs> Check it out! I made it myself! I had to take the, the, the plant from Mrs. Kachuki's porch, but it, it was dying anyways. And she said I could have it inside. It looks better this way, huh? Don't you think? See, I made the ornaments out of an old soup can and some uh, pieces of beer bottles. Plus, I had that old army man, and uh, I just stuck some string through his head so he could. Uh... Damn, damn it. Not right now. Okay. Um, hey, um, okay, hey, buddy, I, I didn't, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to snap at you like that, it's just, it's a hell of a day, that's all, come on over, and show me that thing you got there. It's, it's not a thing, it's, it's our Christmas tree, Dad. Yeah, yeah, sure, I knew, I knew that, that's what I meant. See, I, I found all this stuff out by the dumpster, I was trying to make it look like those ornaments you see in the store on 5th. I, I thought it would be cool to draw the Superman emblem on the, the army man, see? Because, you know, Superman, he's, the army man wasn't very Christmassy, but uh, Superman, he his, he looks more like Santa, you know, with the red, the colors and all. I also thought it would be cool to have a Batman thing on there, too, because Bobby Mills has a Batman decoration on his tree, and that's, you now, know... Now, why the hell would you want Batman on a Christmas tree. I mean, Batman ain't exactly Christmassy either, you know. I mean, he can be scary dressed in all black. Well, but but I thought Batman was one of the good guys. Bobby Mills says he only hurts people that's done something bad. I mean, I guess. Maybe things ain't always that black and white. Sometimes even good people do bad things. You know, a lot of love in that Cratchit household, but not a lot of anything else. I mean, this Scrooge guy on the other hand, he had everything. Big house, fancy cars, power. The guy had more money than he knew what to do with. His place was dark and damp, dingy, dim, and empty as his heart. Some might say he liked it that way. See, old Scroogey wasn't very good with people. He preferred solitude. Eggnog, sir. He had spent most of his life completely obsessed with his work. There wasn't time for any, anyone else. Other people just seemed to be a nuisance. 
Uh, may I hazard a guest and say you've caught something of a cold running around outside in the freezing night? Or would this be too absurd? An assumption. I'm not sick, Alfred. It's just a change in temperature and the humidity in the cave. Ah, uh, yes. Most certainly. It is, after all, impossible for the dark night to get the sniffles. Mr. Wayne, your disregard for the privacy of others. May I ask what? This one is going to lead me to the Joker. Small fish, but sometimes it's all you need to catch a bigger one. Small fish indeed. This one has a child. Do you honestly intend to put at risk a... They all have children, Alfred. The father is just another criminal degenerate. Bagman for the Joker, and not a very good one at that. Just left the money behind and ran. Cowardly, the lot of them. <coughs> the cloud isn't the type to let the money go without coming back to settle his debts. And just what do you intend to do? Wait for the madman to make a house call? It's the most promising lead that I've got. In this war, Alfred, there are risks that you must be willing to take. <coughs> I take the same risk every time I let someone go like this. I take the risk that he will raise his child to be exactly like him. I take the risk that in 10 years his boy will be walking the streets with colors and a gun in his belt. I risk the future, while they risk only the present. <coughs> I know all too well, Master Bruce. Lest you forget, there was another boy whose future was risked on my watch. I'll take liberty of bringing down some cold medication with your dinner. Yep, work was all that mattered to Scrooge. His anger and his loss had consumed him to be the point where human contact was nearly impossible. I say loss because his life hadn't always been this like this. He wasn't always been alone. Once he had been a different man. He had shared his passion for work with a partner. <laughs> he and his partner, they made a good team. He was a younger man then. Life still seemed like it, like things would appear ridiculous to old Scroogey now, which is roads yet to be taken yet to be explored and conquered. But that was then, and this is now. Now his partner was long gone, dead and buried for years, just like Scrooge's youthful optimism. That younger man had been replaced by something harder and darker, something unforgiving and unmerciful. On this particular night, though, old Scrooge had a visitor. Now, some people say that this thing that he saw was a spirit of some sort. Others think it was just a figment of his imagination. Maybe even a little of his conscience playing tricks on his mind. Now, I ain't one to believe in all that supernatural mumbo jumbo. I like to think that what he saw in the dark loneliness of the night was a vision. And his vision looked a hell of a lot like his dead partner. A ghost from the past with a message for the future. He had come to deliver a warning. That if Scrooge continued to live his life as an angry, vengeful, and spiteful man, there would be a price. Every man's got to pay up one day. Stand up and be counted for what he's done in life. The bad things you do become heavyweights. Scrooge had to change before it was too late. Now, I know, I know. Hang in there. I told you there would be some stuff that would be hard to swallow. The point is, whatever Scrooge saw gave him one more warning before disappearing. That night. He would have three other visitors, ghosts, spirits, visions, whatever you want to call them. Point is, Scrooge didn't know who they were or what they would be, only that apparently they would show him things that would change his life forever. I was going to give you another two minutes before heading home. So cold, I can't even light this thing. Any new leads from the toxicology reports from the latest victims? None that we haven't already exploited in the past. See for yourself if you want. Got something else, though, that might interest you, though. Anonymous tip. A burglar is supposed to be knocking off Sprang's auction house tonight. <laughs> you know, Christmas Eve, auction, big haul. <coughs> Get your bed, handle this. I've got too much on my plate tonight without getting caught up in a cat and mouse with her. <coughs> or have you forgotten there's a homicidal maniac still on the loose out there? 
Well, she claims to have some information that might be useful. And you know that she only talks to you. Figure it might be worth checking out. <laughs> Waste of time. She's only interested in <laughs> playing games. You know, you should really get that cough checked out. Sounds like it's deep. But hey, I'm no doctor. Now, Scrooge thought about the vision that he had been thinking of the entire evening. He couldn't get it out of his head. He might have been, must have been crazy, he thought. It had just been his imagination playing tricks on him or something, right? I mean, when you're alone in the dark, the slightest noise or flicker of a shadow across the walls can take strange shapes. Entire conversations with yourself, discussions you could swear were in your head, can echo through the halls of an empty house. <laughs> Nonetheless, rest did not come easy that night for the mean old bugger. His mind drifted, thoughts of the past, unfinished business. The clock strikes one, and just like that, his first visitor at the night appeared at his bedside. It was a beautiful girl. How did he? The hell did she get past the alarm system, he thought. A hot girl can get away with anything. Blackity, are you breathing up there? You getting cold, or is it just the frosty night air? Selena, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> but baby, I'm on this earth to put you in the mood. Come on, the only reason I get out of bed every day is you. I went shopping. Don't you want to see what I got? I'll show you mine if you show me yours. I'll not play games with you tonight. You told Gordon you had information regarding the Joker. Where is he? <laughs> now that's more like it. Oh, honey, how else am I going to get you to come out and play? A girl these days has to bend the truth a bit to get what she wants. Especially when her man spends all his time thinking about someone else. Waste of time. <laughs> I <laughs> should have known. Gordon is a fool. Wait, where are you going? I mean, don't you need to arrest me or something? If someone dies tonight, I'm holding you responsible. I'll, I'll make sure that you go away for a long time. <laughs> Listen to yourself. What happened to you? There was a time nothing would have stopped you from catching me. Nothing. You would have pursued me to the end no matter what was thrown at you. We used to play, remember? It used to be different. You used to be different. It was never for fun. <laughs> Sick people like you. I'm Sick thinking some people? sort of... Sick people like me? How dare you? You think I'm like those other clowns who run around trying to best you? Trying to make a fool of you? <laughs> I'm nothing like those other ghouls. I'm so much more. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> wow. Maybe you are getting old. I didn't mean to. Selena, the only thing that's getting old is this game. There was something about this girl. Something familiar. She reminded him of the man he used to be, sweeping out into the night. She showed him people and places he pushed out of his mind long ago. It was like smelling cotton candy or something and remembering what it was like to ride the Ferris wheel at the county fair when you were a kid. Remembering your heart pounding before that first kiss. His early life seemed so full of vigor, full of accomplishment and triumph. He bit into life with a hunger, a need to be the best man he could be. With it came a rush of emotions he had long since forgotten. These memories, these feelings, had he really been this person? Had he approached life so differently then? Had he been so different, young and naive? Maybe that's what that old geezer thought now. Life really isn't that colorful. Not so full of infinite possibility, he told himself. For Scroogey, life was black and white. All business. There was success and failure. With that thought, the first visitor left the old geezer with his past <laughs> oh, oh. to think good and hard about his present <laughs> oh, oh. need a hand looks like you could use one the night was far from over though see scrooge was still expecting two other visitors the second was big Larger than life, literally. He was dressed colorfully, too. Kind of ridiculous, Scrooge thought. It was the eyes that were the most troubling. Too deep and kind for a man with such an impressive physical presence. I'm <coughs> fine. 
up past your bedtime, aren't you? <coughs> From the look of you, that makes two of us. It's too cold to be out in your condition. Nasty cough you've got there. I heard you hacking all the way from Metropolis. Looks like pneumonia, or possibly something more serious. Huh. <coughs> it's like the way you talk about that. It's like you know what it's like to have it. You Kryptonians get sick so often, right? Leave the medical advice to the professionals. Isn't there someone to save in the world tonight? Yeah, you. Come on, don't be a pain about this. Just let me give you a lift to your car. His hands were large and looked powerful, like they could crush Scrooge's frail body like a walnut shell. But there was something familiar, an odd warmth, both from outside and within the giant of a man. One condition. I've got a stop to make first. Once again, the old bugger flew out into the night with what could have been some kind of apparition and wondered if he was going crazy. See? This was all still too much like a dream to Scrooge. If it was a dream, though, then why did the heat he felt emanating from the big, colorful fellow seem so real? Why are we here? Scrooge never believed in ghosts, spirits, or anything of the like. He never considered himself to be a superstitious guy. I'm checking on some bait. I wanted to see if <laughs> the fish are biting. Isn't it bad for a hunter to use parents or children as bait? Justice comes as a price. The one is getting to help me to reel in the clown. He works with him. No. His feet had always been planted firmly on the ground. Superstitious or superstition was a weakness of other guys, a weakness he could not afford. And sooner or later, his employer is going to come to collect. Just a matter of time and I'll have him. Scrooge's mind didn't want to believe any of this. He knew that emotions couldn't be trusted, despite... Being a little shaken up by the memory of his past, he didn't want to lose sight of the person he'd become. He fought hard to get where he was in life. If the father is involved, he could go to prison, or worse, he could... Then we only decrease the surplus criminal population. What are you going to do about the boy? I'm going to scare him. Scare him so badly he doesn't ever follow in his father's footsteps. The present Scrooge was not weak. I don't think that's the way to go here, Bruce. Right? But the big colorful fellow wasn't about to give up. I think there might be a better way. Let's go. I need to show you something. He knew that there was still the chance for old Scroogey to see something he might have stopped looking for long ago. Sometimes, I realize that spending so much time above the world makes me forget that there are millions of people out there living their lives, decent lives. I look down and see... You look down on people. Not in the same way you do. Scrooge scoffed. This better be something spectacular, he thought to himself with a sneer. Look at your people. Take a second and look at your lambs as you do your lions. Sometimes I think that helping people, saving people, can be just as easy as showing them your face. The face of someone exactly like them. <laughs> Showing them your face is easy when bullets bounce off of it. But the things the spirit showed him were not were so real, downright ordinary. They weren't strange visions from the past, but flashes of the present everyday life. There were even some familiar faces. Hold up. Can't thank you and the missus enough for having me over tonight. I appreciate it, sir. Can't have one of my boys freezing his butt off on Christmas Eve without a little cheer in his belly to keep him warm besides seems like a quiet night out there thank the lord so far so good although we did get some batman sightings i still don't know what to make of that guy i mean i know you trust him and all but uh it, it's it's not an easy relationship to keep but uh, there isn't exactly a handbook on how to handle certain elements of uh, our city I guess he's a necessary evil. Oh, make no mistake. He's not evil. No, I would say he walks a fine line. It's just that sometimes he steps on the side of the line where you and I might hesitate to tread. Play on the other side enough, and you tend to lose sight of the line. His vision can be blurry sometimes, but I like to think I'm the prescription he needs to see clearly. 
<laughs> Take me to my car. I need to get back to the cave. He always considered himself a pillar of his community, an important man that people respected. It seemed that others didn't necessarily share this opinion. Some still had faith, though, and along with that time-honored smile of folks who have the amazing ability to look on the bright side of things. Scrooge, on the other hand, wondered, how did they always seem to fill a glass that was constantly empty? How did they manage to keep the faith, the universal hope for change and for the better? It had been a long time since Scrooge had felt that kind of hope. He had pretty much resigned himself to the fact that life is a never-ending battle, the darkness of the world that had forced him into the shadows and only way to combat the monsters was to become one himself but the second spirit didn't feel the same he seemed to be a source of infinite hope and he radiated the hope with every moment and word this attitude was so foreign to scrooge and made him suspicious yep you definitely need to see a doctor too bad they don't make body armor for your insides. You see, it's like this. Sometimes when you work in the dirt, it's tough after a while to clean yourself off. You get used to the filth. You start to feel comfortable in it. And then you wake up one day and wonder how everybody else thinks you're dirty. Just lots of rest and fluids. In fact, I'd consider calling Alfred to come pick you up. And you really shouldn't be driving. <laughs> I've got autopilot. Good night, Bruce. Feel better. And just like that, the big fellow was gone. Things went dark and quiet, and Scrooge wasn't quite sure if he was awake or sleeping. He was still dreaming. Maybe the old geezer would wake up to a bright new day. And he'd remember the night wasn't quite over yet, and there would be three visitors. Three. Ever have that dream when you're fallen, and it really feels like you're fallen, and then you wake yourself up, and you can still feel the gravity pulling you down? You ever wonder what happens when you can't wake yourself up? Is that the dream you're telling your mind you're dying for real? Now, I got a theory about this third visitor. The old man painted the guy out to be the scariest thing you ever laid eyes on. Black cloak, face always covered in shadows, blah, 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 blah. Now, Pop loved to take a bit of creative license with things. He had what Ma called a subjective relationship with the truth. He loved to talk. Hell, he talked so much that all the characters in his story blabbered as much as he did. Ah, 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 ah. What never sat right with me about this last part of the story was the fact that the last visitor never spoke a word to Scrooge. Now, call me cautious. But if it was me and some evil looking cat shows up out of nowhere, points his finger at a, car, a creepy cemetery, and I follow him inside, I'd have to be off my meds. It's like those stupid kids in the horror movies always won't open up the closed door to look inside, like they're not expecting some chainsaw wielding maniac to try and chop a month or two. No thanks. It's going to take one charm and spirit of death with a silver tongue to convince me to follow him to the grave, not some freaky, faceless mute. But then I realized there was no third visitor. Some people start hallucinating when they're about to die. In my book, if you're chasing beautiful women across rooftops and flying around with big, colorful men that glow, something's rotten in Denmark. Let's face it, Scrooge wasn't exactly a spring chicken. Aside from the years, we're talking about a guy with some serious anger management and stress issues. Even the heartless can have a heart attack, right? Something, not someone, came knocking that night. Old Scroogey was falling in his dreams, and he wasn't waking up. I think everybody wants to believe they'll be remembered after they check out. I also think everybody likes to believe life can go on, can't go on without them. But that's just meet the truth. No way to stop the future. Ah! Justice comes out of Christ. Jesus, no, I was only... You're going to kill me, man! And, and, and I'll, I'll only be decreasing the surplus criminal population. No! Please! I have a kid! You're too young to be thinking about this kind of stuff now, but trust me, most men want to leave the world a better place than they found it. They want to feel like they've made a difference, been somebody. Everybody wants to be a Cadillac. Nobody wants to be an old junker. All Scrooge is like, he had probably thought he was a caddy. Great paint jobs, powerful engine, smooth ride. I think 
when all was said and done and he came down to the zero hour, old Scrooge knew he'd be remembered as the junker, you know, the one that used to break down on you all the time. You never forget what a pain in the neck it was. Scrooge has lived his life as a man who could turn on you at any moment, leave you stranded or hurt. He'd been the type of man that people only feared, feared that he'd break them down on him again. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of aiding and abetting a known criminal obstruction of justice. Now, I think as those clammy hands pushed down on Scrooge's chest, thought about the future for the first time, and realized the only legacy he would leave behind was pain. Harboring a known fugitive, Maleficent in office, in office and accessory. I hereby sentence you to a term no less than 30 years to be served in Gotham State Penitentiary without the possibility of parole. Anyone ever had tried to get close to him was punished for it. Why should they care if he bit the dust? Why would it make any difference to them at all if they made no difference to him in the end? He would die in his big, expensive house full of stuff that would be empty and cold. Here we have this fine painting of Sir Go Montgomery Wilkin, 1874, titled Summer in Venice. To 70,000, we start the bidding at 40,000. No friends left to care that he was gone. Do we have 40,000? Yes, wonderful. How about 42,000? Yes, 42 for the lovely lady in the front. Now, first row, 45,000. No one to miss him or to mourn him. They say you're born alone and you die alone. If you had the chance to change it, to get it right, would you fight for it? Even if that's true, would you want it to be? Sometimes it takes dying to teach a fella how to live in. Scrooge's case, it took a real doozy of a night to make him realize this. You can call it a near-death experience. I call it a wake-up call. His clock was ticking. If he was going to get the message, he would need to listen up quick. See, with some guys, all you need is to whisper in their ears. Santa, is that you? Other guys, and old Scroogey was definitely one of the other guys. How, how, how? They need to be hit upside the head with a baseball bat. That night, Scroogey got it and got it good. I know, I know. You're expecting the big guy in red. If it's all the same, though, I have a bag of presents, too. What would you say, big guy? Want to know what I got here for you and your old man? I can't. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, this is a good one. Ever play Clue? I love that game. Colonel Mustard, what a name. So, what say we play a little? Yeah, get your old man out here. He should play too. He he knows all about mysteries. It wasn't just a new perspective on things. I want him to solve a mystery of me missing moolah. Ha 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 ha. Come out, Bobby. This game sucks with just two people. What do you want, kiddo? Maybe I'll give the little guy here a lead pipe. He can be Miss Scarlet. Ah, don't you touch my son! Oh, ha, ha, ha. Come on, Bobby boy. You know there's no baseball in Clue. It was a second chance. A chance to make things right. To be the good guy for once. Play fair. How are we ever going to solve the mystery of my missing money if you're missing half your face? When my old man told me the story, he said that Scroogey finally grew a conscience. Stop, mister, please. That he didn't want the people around him to suffer because of the mistakes he made in his life. Question. Who killed Bobby? I'd like to think that there were larger forces at work, though. Please, I, I, I panicked. Batman was there. I win. I killed Bob in the kitchen with a revolver. I believe a man can change, period. But change is such a powerful thing, such a big idea, that I gotta believe there's more to it than just making a choice. No! Please, no! <laughs> you see, outside forces have come into play, something elemental. But it wasn't just the fear of dying. It was the hope that he could have a better death. You got to make the leap. 
to take the chance that you'll fail, but you'll go down trying anyways. After a lifetime in hurting and bullying people, making people afraid of him, Scrooge had the chance to make sure that when he finally did check out, when it was all was said and done, people remembered that he had the chance to die the villain, but went out the hero. You want to threaten me? You want to threaten my son? Who's the clown now, huh? So who wants to play games? Oh, Bobby boy, that's the way to do it. Why don't I show you how to play? Come on, show me. I, I will. I, I... Let her rip. You're not a criminal, show your son what kind of man you are. Someone they could believe in. Show him what a hero is. Trouble is, realizing all this stuff's only the first step. Boring. Neither of you know how to have a good time. If you want to walk the walk, well, you know how the rest of this goes. Old Scroogey was lucky to wake up the next morning and he knew it. He knew that he had just gotten out of the joint after a long stint. Like a free man. There were just people to see and things to do, promises to be made and kept. And justice, like an old con, he wanted to do it all on the first day. The first person on the list was Bob. He figured it was only right. I mean, he'd always treated the guy, poor guy, like dirt. Today, though, he figured it was high time to pay him back. A raise, benefits, PPO, 401k, the works. Scrooge made the rounds that day. Old friends, business associates, pretty much anyone whose life he'd previously made miserable. He wanted to show him to be the guy who could set things straight, the guy they could depend on. Most of them were shocked at this new Scrooge they were seeing. Like I told you at the beginning, change ain't exactly easy to believe in, but I guess it's easier to swallow than three ghosts. Now, the old man said he liked the story so much because it had a happy ending. He said in real life, Happy endings. I like unicorns. I asked him if he believed it was all true or not, and he thought it was just some yarn. I mean, someone made up to get the kids to fall asleep. He told me it didn't really matter. If I was true, it would. It was what the story meant that was so important. I don't know, kiddo. What do you think's the more the moral of the story? The end. Finn. Okay. Here's because I was coughing so intently. <laughs> yeah, I, I I was like some of the, those coughs. I was like, damn, Justin, that's that's not acting. That's a real cough. <laughs> um. Okay, so I need to say something. Leo, your Joker was terrifying. It was scary as hell. <laughs> yeah, I see Leo in a whole different light now. Agreed. And. and and Brandon, your Superman was great, man. Like yeah. I actually was like, yeah. it's my I, like Superman. I was on some Andrea Bocelli thing. I was like, he lift me up. <laughs> I mean, I was Superman in my head uh, after podcasting with him so long. Yeah, I, I was trying to go for the baritone, but uh, warm. You know, no, you did good. And then it's and then it's very easy to slip into you know like very much like, take me to my car. I need to get back to the cave. Whereas uh, it's like. Hey Bruce, you might want to get checked out by a doctor because it looks like you're gonna die. But yeah. I guess I'll just leave you with Alfred. And then see you later. <laughs> and, and then Harley, He's your 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 Catwoman, your Catwoman. Was really great. Your Catwoman was great. Oh, yeah, yeah like honestly, as much as it would have been funny hearing Jeremy do Catwoman, your yours was better. Yeah, oh, hey, I stepped on so much lines too. though. I didn't mean to. Um, I'm not the only one, so I wouldn't worry about it. And then. Um, <laughs> And then I'm sorry, Jeremy. I, I, you're Timmy. At one, I was like, I can't. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, committed, dude. Yeah. Be committed to it. I yeah. love Timmy. And then I've Rick, been doing it all day. I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> and, <laughs> I had to grab my mouth. I was laughing so hard when you first started doing it. Yeah. yeah. And then Rich, your, uh, your Alfred was very much, you know, the uh, Joker. Very, <laughs> uh, well, I was trying to give him like a Batman some condemnation. In, in I liked Batman. your Alfred. I was like, wow. I was happy. He was, a, he was an it. intense Alfred. Oh, definitely. Uh, Alfred was pissed. And, Alfred and was, was like, the fuck. And 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 I gotta say for myself, I was like, why am I reading this narration with a very New York accent? Like, I thought that when you started. <laughs> yeah, I was like, why am I making this Bob Cratchit like some sort of wise guy? Like, I feel like I was watching. <laughs> yeah. I was I was watching like a an, an interstitial scene in like I a, have to say it's movie. 
Oh, kind of how I read Look the at this Reddit. dame pulling up to the bar now. This is one of the oldest tricks in the book. Look what, what she's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> bar rescue right there, you know? So, well, I'm sorry, what did you say, Jeremy? I, I was saying that when I actually read the book, that's how I read uh, the narrator as kind oh. of... But I had Bob totally as a different person until the very end when I realized that Bob was the same person. I was yeah. like, oh, son of a bitch. Well, that's what I... I tried like I tried following that note and I tried like lessening my accent as the story went on to then at the end. I was like, I don't know. What do you guys think of the moral of the story is? So I was like, <laughs> I'm less of a wise guy now. Um, and then Justin, you're, you're Batman. Like those costs. Oh, it was really perfect. Batman. I was <laughs> like, I, I, I was like, damn, Batman's really sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, it, and I was like, wow, but I'm sorry. Like, like I said, Leo, Take the cake. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, was, I wasn't expecting Leo to be so creepy, and he really was. That's the he great. really. I, 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 I want to say, Gordon, the the Gordon voice made me think of uh, Sam from the oh, Spawn yeah. animated series. Yeah, yeah that's, okay. that's, that's yeah. Too that, yeah. I kind of do like gruff and agitated. Yeah. It's funny because, like, as you were reading it like that. I immediately was like, oh, you know what? Like uh, another, like just another way it could have been done too. Like if I had, if I had gone with Gordon, I might not have thought about it because it only occurred to me after I heard somebody else doing it. <laughs> I would have gone per me, not you. I don't mean it like that. I probably would have tried to do like a Dennis Farina impression. Oh, oh Turpin. Yeah, go, go with like a, a Chicago cop kind of thing. Cause well, that, is, that is supposed to be Gordon. Yeah, and it, it's it's funny because if I was Alfred, I totally would have just you know, turning in, so you just you know just that sarcastic, very dry. Yeah, just oh, I do hope your toys would stop playing with you, Master Bruce. Dining in for one again. Um, and but uh, I'm sorry, I I have to say, I, I, I'm sorry, Leo. I just like how we're just like, oh, I, am I? Are you serious? Was I really doing the Joker? And you fucking nailed it, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I have to say, this book really does portray a lot of these characters really well, too. Agreed. Like the book itself is like Superman is like dead on for what Superman should be. This mm -hmm. altruistic, like, yeah, I may be looking down on them, Bruce, but that's be only because I'm fucking flying in the sky. Yeah. What the fuck? Right. Not about? the same way you do, Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, but now, but it's very... funny now I'm going to read this book and I'm just going to hear everyone's voices. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just going to, I'm just going to be like, oh, God, Leo, why? Oh, you know, I'm just, glad, just, I'm just glad I didn't have to say here. Lex Luthor like that because I, I would have been really torn. Oh. Do I say it like Luthor or Luthor? Luthor no, or Luthor? Just, you, you've you've got to do it like uh, robot chicken Lex Luthor, you know, sexy Lexi and the you know, <laughs> Lex Luthor. And then just turn it off. Just I just made it my ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> like I've rewatched that so much. Um, Ooh, the, 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 what was it? Every time he keeps getting his ass whooped by that kid with the ball. God damn it, Tyler, stop. Uh, he's trying to get his daughter from spring break. <laughs> you know, you're well, <laughs> you all did an amazing job. Seriously. Oh, everyone right. did a great job. That was fun. That was so fun. Yeah. And, and again, Harley, I know, you know, your namesake, but you did a good Selena. Like I was like, Thank I was you. like nicely done. Like yeah. again, in the I best, mean, in the best way possible. It, it, you made me think of Eartha Kitt. Yeah. Oh, wow. what a what compliment. A compliment. Whoa. Oh, I'm blown away. Thank you. I mean, Eartha Kitt was like my favorite Catwoman. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, you, mm -hmm. you, you really, you really like nailed exactly the, the dangerous sensuality of the character. That's exactly how it's well, supposed to be. I, and I just remember it's Rich asking the 90s, her. My friend. <laughs> and I, and I just remember Rich asking her last, last, last week. He was like, Hey, babe, do you want to read Catwoman? And she's around the room. Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Are you done yet? <laughs> Are you done? I want to I wanna watch more something, whatever we're watching, you know? Um, In Walker Ridge. No, but this was this Jeremy. I mean, you know, <laughs> kudos to Jeremy 
for for typing this up, even with some of the errors. You want to know something? I did not realize until the very probably like the last three or four pages. My my fucking computer has a dictation uh, thing. Ooh. I could have just read the whole fucking thing to my computer. Damn it! Yeah, a lot of work. His computer's got a Dick Tracy thing. <laughs> It, it was well worth it, though. I, I appreciate it. Like, you guys made it all worth all the time. So Yeah, that was fun. It was right. fantastic. And, and Drew, great job, because you had a lot to read. And Yeah, and dude. Holy you crap. Didn't, you didn't pause or crash at all. Years of theater, my friends. Years of theater and reading four comics a day will make your narrative not break a sweat. And... Speaking of uh, comic well. fans, I'm reading Doom Patrol right now. Oh, that is the stuff. weirdest fucking book I've ever read. Yeah, Which well, uh, it's version? Version. the Grant yeah. Morrison era? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Like yeah. I literally, I was like, I feel like I need to be high to really get. I'm like, what the fuck, Grant? I gotta like, bring you a jar, Drew. Like we gotta meet up so I can just like hear you. What's go. his name? Ace Mentalo or something? No. Flex Mentalo. Flex, Flex Mentalo. Yeah. 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 What the? I was gonna fuck? say, have you? But no, no, no. There's a separate series that he did for. Flex oh Mentalo. no. Yeah. Oh no. It's a mini series. Like, you understand? It's like so fucking weird. Brandon, I have sometimes. I'm like. I was like, no, they toned down the weirdness for the show. Man of muscle oh, memory. They really did. I was like, because I'm reading this, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I thought... Yeah, I mean, you just summed up most of what Grant Morrison has written. Ever. Yeah, that pretty much is. Yeah, and it, and it's funny, because I remember when I was... What the fuck? Let's not cast his X-Men run. Uh, oh, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. whoa. Com Listen, there's some of his X-Men run was good. I don't want to... I don't want to voice act it. I mean... <laughs> oh no god no yeah no, i knew i knew no, what you no, meant no. justin no 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 see what we need to I do jump professor yeah. x though <laughs> no 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 <laughs> leo and and rich what we need to do is we need to cast a couple we need to cast a story arc of next wave and really <laughs> oh geez and really get that going because we do a reading of that i'm sorry i i i i, I don't even know what's going to happen there, but dibs on your anger. Joy for whoever yeah, dibs just on walks into stuff. listening to it oh, without any uh, idea of what we're actually doing. I I think honestly, I feel like Harley would be a really good um, Elsa Bloodstone. Do you agree with that, Rich? Sure. I can see that. Either that or <laughs> sure. Either that enthusiasm. or enthusiasm. No, I take that back. I take that back. Boom, boom. There you go. I'll read anything. No, no, much, no, no. I would very no. much be liking to you voice see more Pierre. Elsa Bloodstone. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Rich, um, uh, uh, Dara would be a good boom boom. Is uh, Roberto Dara. DaCosta in that? D Dara does not. No, I am Roberto DaCosta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Roberto DaCosta. I'm very rich. You could be Captain Marvel and I'm saying spot. how you used to lead the Avengers. Oh, oh Marvel. <laughs> No, but th that no, but the you, could, you could always you could be Janisville. You could just you always talk through gritted teeth. What here? What, what was that story arc where you had uh, Catherine on, right? Where it was with Hyperion or and all of that. That would be one to do. Oh shit! Is that Exiles? No, no. Supreme uh, Supreme. Power? Supreme. Supreme. Oh, Supreme Power. Supreme, yeah. yeah. Supreme, Supreme Power. No, no, no. See, Justin, what we need to do is you need Which to one? pick a you need to pick a Turtles book. And we all get together and read that. And which, you... I kind of do that time. every week on my own show. <laughs> which, I know, which, but, which version of, of the of Squadron Supreme was it? Like we, we did the original, Brandon. Oh, the original, Mark Groom. Okay. That one. Yeah. yeah. It was That's Catherine Groom. Yeah, because we had Catherine Schuler on. Schuler. So, so um, since That's we awesome. had such a fun time with this, is this something that we would maybe like to do like once a month or once every other month? Smash pages, yes. Let's make oh, this yeah. a thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I can dig on that. I mean, I, I will say it is a little difficult getting smushed on a Tuesday. Uh, but aside from that, fantastic. 100%. Wonderful. I, I, oh, God, the drugs just kicked in. 
<laughs> just now. Oh, wow. <laughs> and the show's over. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> That's oh, the third wave. Yeah. Wrap oh, it up, man, kids. Yeah. You don't have to you go to the carpet. Yeah. You got to time your peak. <laughs> Closing time. One semi -sonic call for alcohol. I will mute your mic. <laughs> <laughs> But we could always record on another night and do a half the episode um, on Tuesday night, and we could. Always oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, like, if we were, if we decided to record it, then that could. Listen, that's... I, I'm just telling you, I have been dreaming about us ripping uh, oh, no. one, one more day. Just, I just want to get sloshed, and eat. we don't even need to read it. We just need to talk about it and just call. <laughs> All he of has it. been dreaming about that. I mean, yeah, that definitely can't happen on a fucking school night. <laughs> oh no, that's no, that's a Friday. That is a we are getting tanked. Welcome to tanked pages. We are getting gone. Yeah. I thought you said it was smashed pages. Yeah, listen. Point being is, but that's the evolution. <laughs> it oh, goes, the like, <laughs> yeah, it goes from like, like lush pages. Is that? Then it'll be a hash pages. Oh, hey. hash pages. there we go. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you like that oh, one. damn it, Leo. Like Put one. fucking pieces of tape on those buttons already. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is no. But listen, we, we can always pick something. Yeah, like yeah. the boys. Oh, my God. Should we wrap oh. this? One? Oh, my God. If we read. That's... Okay, I'm sorry. If we read. Okay, I'm sorry. If we you read fucking, yeah. if we if we read Hero Gasm, <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> uh, well, we, we'll we'll well, talk. We'll, we'll figure it out. But uh, yeah, th uh, this was a lot of fun. And uh, Brandon's right. We should wrap things up. No, Jeremy said it. First. Brandon's doing amazing. the red light. All right, everybody, wrap it up. Come on. <laughs> uh, I so, should just figure we have twelve people to go through to say all the. Yeah, ideas. totally. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching this fine evening, and I hope you had as much fun as we did here. Uh, for me, just Google Leo Pond. You find a bunch of stuff. Could be true, could be could be not. Uh, but, you know, I run the Dorkening Podcast Network. Head on over to thedorkening.com. You can find a lot of awesome shows doing a lot of awesome stuff, a lot of awesome people doing a lot of awesome stuff, and uh, maybe that's my brownie talking. And Also, you know, uh, me, uh, along with you know, splash pages, uh, myself, Justin and Brandon, we do uh, a couple shows, uh, on the, on the side, uh, the dork night. And I'll let you, them tell, uh, tell what else we do. Uh, Brandon, what else do we do? Oh, cool. So yeah, you just like, Oh, the dork night. And then Brandon, you just continue talking. Thank you so much for that. Leo. <laughs> Take it from here. Powerful Brandon. Oh, what? Okay, cool. Uh, hi everyone. I'm powerful. Brandon, the other show that Leo, was going to mention it. and you know i'm gonna mention the other one that he started because he just said the name of it uh it's it's leo justin and myself uh, called the dork night in which we talk about all things batman uh every other week juxtaposed with that is comics paradox um me leo and justin again uh we discuss uh for every other week an issue of what if or a dc's else world or we'll go over story arcs uh or or series what have you that are all alternate takes and realities of characters you already know and love uh, and you can find those uh every other sunday wherever fine podcasts are broadcast awesome jar jar Comic book lovers, buy, sell, trade, and auction. Come buy, sell, trade, and auction all your wonderful geek stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, Ghostbuster Man 1984. Justin! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Check out our new podcast. Three guys. One I'm like, <laughs> three guys, one hat. <laughs> Who gets the hat this week? <laughs> Only yeah, the USPSSL. Oh, <laughs> what what is got, going on? Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Oh my God, I'm a tomato. <laughs> God bless us, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm too tired right now to do this, but... I'm on uh, Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I do stuff for Screen Rant when I'm not tired or a little. Um, 
and we're on Splash Pages, and life is good, and God bless us, everyone. God. Thanks for a great year. 2023 is going to be great. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, that was Drew Marshmallow great. and his rendition of Thing from the Adams Family. Thank you. And you can find him on Ghostbusters oh. 1984 on uh, Instagram. Harley! Hi, um, I'm Harley Wild, and I don't have any social media stuff to plug because I kind of live under a rock. It's a shabby chic rock, but it's a rock nonetheless. Um, yeah, but I had fun. Thanks. Yes. Velvet, take us out, my friend. All right. So you guys know me. I'm Rich Davis, a.k.a. The Velvet Joker, and it has been a fantastic year on Splash Pages, and we had a good imbibed um, episode this episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of uh, Splash of the Past. Uh, you guys can definitely check us out. We have the Splash Pages YouTube. You can also check us out anywhere you listen to podcasts. Uh, we are on our, I believe, 87th or 88th episode, possibly. Oh, sure. Award-winning, and... Uh, we're some great guys doing some creative stuff, and we hope you uh, have been enjoying the show. So have a great evening. Good night. This is the last show of the year. We will see you in January. Woohoo! Oh, I found my hat. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Hope you guys get some great nerd presents. Oh, yeah. <laughs>